Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Wildflower and today we're going to talk about how to write a nursing SBAR. SBAR is a tool used to effectively communicate concise, essential information. The word SBAR is an acronym. S stands for situation or why the patient is here. B for background or previous relevant medical history. A is for assessment like patient vitals and overall look head to toe. And R is for recommended action or next steps in patient care. In the hospital, report sheets usually look like these three columns on one page. I went ahead and decided to make my own to create more space for notes. I'll put a link in the description box for you guys. I added a to-do checklist, space for any labs, and if the nurse has to collect the lab for any progress notes. The information that is used to fill out the SBAR is usually collected from the history and physical or HMP. We'll come back to what's all included in this list in a little bit. I'm going to create a mock SBAR with a completely made up patient and give report to myself while writing in the appropriate section. Let's take the name Crayola, last name Washington. So the situation is Crayola is a 75 year old female got to the hospital on 222 EMS found her in her urine at home alone when her daughter couldn't reach her. She was having shortness of breath. Oxygen saturation was found to be at 86% at room air and was having altered mental status. She has a history of anxiety, depression, type two diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, blood clots, two cardiac stents, pneumonia, urinary tract infection, sleep apnea for which she uses a CPAP machine at night, and she's a current smoker. Patient has allergies to amlodipine, latex, and strawberry. She has Dr. Apple as her hospitalist, pulmonary, and neurology on. Because of her shortness of breath, they did a chest x-ray and found bilateral lower lobe patchy infiltrates and pleural effusion. Because of her altered mental status, they did a CT of her head and it was found to be not acute. They also did a CT of her chest, which showed bilateral lobe infiltrates and a small right lower lobe pulmonary effusion. And down in the ED, they were able to collect a UA and the cultures were positive for E. coli. Because of the results of these diagnostic tests, we had to go ahead and add on these specialty doctors. Since the patient is here for altered mental status, we're going to have her bed alarm on and get her up times one with the walker and gate belt also offering Q2 turns. She is a full code, diabetic, on a four carb diet, ACHS, AccuCheX, which her blood sugars have been a little bit elevated because she's receiving IV steroids. Her vital signs are stable. Her acceptable pain is 99 and currently rates pain at a zero. She takes aspirin as an anticoagulant. I would say she's alert times two currently not to date or situation and actually I forgot to mention that her temp is slightly elevated on telemetry she is sinus rhythm two over two pulses no edema she has inspiratory and expiratory wheezes and gets really short of breath with activity she's at two liters nasal cannula and she also needs two liters at night with her CPAP machine she has a productive cough and it's been thick and green. Her last bowel movement was on the 23rd and she has a Foley in for accurate eyes and nose. It's been clear but sediment. Her bottom and peri area is excoriated. So we've been using Venilex cream and Nyostatin powder. Her IV is a left AC 20 gauge placed on the 22nd. It has normal saline going at 75 mLs an hour. 
As far as planning and recommendation goes, she has PT and OT that work with her. She will have labs collected tomorrow. She has been getting IV steroids, antibiotics, and fluids, scheduled and PRN breathing treatments, repeat chest x-ray tomorrow, and encouragement of smoking cessation. So that is typically how a nursing report goes. I like to keep this paper for my next shift, so I'll use black for my first shift and then another color for updates. At the beginning of shift, I like to make sure I highlight my medication times and then cross them off as I go along. And I can use a different color for different days with that as well. With the form that I created, I have enough space for four patients front and back. Um, if I need to, I can always grab another sheet. And all of this information that has been filled in in this S bar could have been retrieved or obtained from the H and P. So like I said, let's go back to that list of all the things that are contained in the H and P. We have her admit date, date of birth, chief complaint, which was short of breath and altered mental status, but ended up being pneumonia and UTI. Her previous medical history, including any surgeries, her allergies, medication that she'll be taking in the hospital, social history, she's a smoker, physical exam, labs, which she'll be getting retaken tomorrow, and imaging tests, chest x-ray, CT of her head, CT of her chest. And in the things listed in the progress section, we can see what the plan is for this patient. I know that's a lot of information to keep up with, but you guys did awesome. If you learned something today, give me a like. And if you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks.